Hello everyone, I'm Human Hard Drive, and today I want to share something. Uh, it's an it's an Android app, but I'm not sure if it's an iOS app. That's pretty interesting. And what it does is it allows you to combine two very open source environments. Obviously, Android is incredibly open source and prides itself on just how open source it is. And the Arduino, which was originally developed to be something open source that anyone could use and introduce anyone to the concept of the microcontroller. And what it is, is it's an app that lets you gain control of your Arduino over either a Bluetooth or Ethernet connection. It's right here. Uh, it might be a little hard to see. It's called Arduino Commander. Now, if you've ever wanted to control your Arduino remotely, this is a good place to start. Now, for if you don't have a phone or a tablet that has, uh, say, USB ports that would allow you to connect it to your Arduino directly, this is a good substitute. Uh, you, it allows you to connect to the Arduino using either Bluetooth or Ethernet, so you can have this connected via an Ethernet shield, which is what I'll be showing you how to do today. And what it lets you do is it lets you take control of all of these Arduino pins. Yeah, I know, failed to connect because it's not set up at the moment. And it lets you control each of the subtle nuances of each pin. So you can gain access to, i to take this, scratch to hold it. Well, it let, it, you'll see, it lets you take control of the pulse width modulation pins. It'll even let you control servos. You can do analog in. It'll even let you measure uh, accelerometer values if you have that set up or uh, all sorts of sensors. So what I'm going to show you how to do today is set this up to work with the Arduino and the Ethernet shield. So obviously, in order to do this, you're going to need, move that out of the way, an Arduino and an Ethernet shield, and some means by which to connect your Arduino to the internet. So you're going to need uh, an Ethernet cable and a router or a computer you have set up to do internet sharing. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code, because there's actually code you need to run on your Arduino to make it work. Okay, so the first thing you're going to have to do is I'm going to put this link in the web's uh, in the description. It's a link to the Arduino Commander's Ethernet libraries on GitHub. And right down here are two libraries that are going to be put into your Arduino libraries folder which are going to add a couple extras to the Ethernet and Fermata folders. The Fermata folder is actually going to contain the example file that is going to be downloaded onto the Arduino. So uh, I've gone ahead and downloaded this, and you should end up with a folder called for Entoine Arduino Commander, and I think there's one more word in there, with these two folders. So what you're just going to go ahead and do is, I've also got the Arduino folder open for the Arduino IDE, and I'm just going to go to the Libraries folder, and I'm just going to copy this and bring it over to here, and yes, you're going to merge them merge that one as well and you're going to that's just a you're going to move and replace the some of the ethernet files it's just a it's a bit of a tweak so that it works with yes I want to merge this one yes yes okay and all that's going to do is tweak some of the f files and such to make it work for the program on your phone so to get this program, you're going to go File, Examples, and you're going to come down here to Fermata, and you want oh, for standard Fermata Ethernet. If I make this full screen, there we go. And so here is all of the code necessary to do all the stuff. So this includes digital inputs, outputs, PWM, I think there's I2C in here as well. You can do servo control, you can read accelerometer values, magnetometer values I think are in there as well. All sorts of cool stuff and it's a really great program to play around with. Now down towards the bottom are two things you're going to want to find. Keep going, keep going, here it is. The IP address and the port. Now for the IP address, what you're going to want to do is tweak it so that this number 
is in the block of devices you're going to be using to access the Arduino. So if you're using your phone on Wi-Fi, you're going to want the same block that your phone is using. So I know that that is the two block in my in my house. Um, quick, quick quickest way to do that is if you're to find out what it is is if you're using a Windows machine, you can go ahead and open your command prompt and just type in IP config, assuming your computer's on the same block. And if I scroll up, I'm looking for the two block. That's your default gateway and it's the two block. I'm just gonna close that, open this up. So I've gone ahead and just changed it to a two so everything works. The other thing you're going to want to make note of is the port number because this is what the uh, program is going to ask, is ask for. It's going to ask for the IP address and it's going to ask for the port number. So you can go ahead and change this to whatever you want. Um, I'm going to leave it as 1024 and this is 2.100 which is already saved in my device. So with that you just download that to your Arduino and I'm going to hook it up to my Ethernet connection which is set up with my router and I am going to give it an LED so I can show some of the things it does. So let's go look at that. Okay, so here we are back. I've got my Arduino hooked up. Whoop, don't want to move it too much. Got it a uh, USB power supply and it's hooked up to the ethernet. And I know it's a little tricky to see, but there's a little LED there blinking so it's showing it's connected to an ethernet. And I've gone ahead and hooked up an LED back here. I think I'll actually turn out the light so you can see the effect. There we go. Now, the great thing about this is that you don't, in the code, you don't have to think about what pins you've got hooked up or how they or how they need to be set up. You can just do it all woo, on your phone. So just go back to the connect page. Now, Ethernet, and I've already got it set up. So 192.168.2.100. I'm going to go ahead and connect and the board turns blue to let you know it's connected. Now I've got the LED here set up on pin 3, so if I hit pin th that's 4, let me try 3, that's 2, 2 again, <laughs> one more. There we go, so pin 3, there are your menu options, digital input, output, I'll make it an output and I'll turn it on and I'm going to move this out of the way so you can see it and I hit OK and it turns on. And if I I can do this and I can turn it off. And pin 3 is also PWM pulse width modulation. So if I can hit 3 again, there we go. And I make it PWM and I make it really tiny. It should be pretty dim. Let's see here. Let's try 0.6 volts. That's pretty dim. Let's go for 2.3 volts, brighter, and the full 5 volts, brighter still. Now, I'm going to move this out of the way for now, bring the phone back in. I'm going to see if I can focus a little bit. There we go. Okay, so let's cancel. I click on pin 3, and that's pin 2. You can see my problem with this. Pin 3. Now, on some of these pins, there is advanced, and if I, you go ahead and click that, you can see some of the more um, advanced sensors you can hook up. So you've got accelerometer, mag magnetometer, you have an orientation sensor, and even a light sensor. And so these can all be pulled through with a much higher update rate than is normally possible because it's being given a higher priority. And you can set ranges, rounding rates, uh, you can get set axes if it's multi-axis. And so this is a really great tool if you're interested in trying to do some remote control stuff with your Arduino for, with very little extra hardware. Um, this is the Ethernet one. Uh, I, there's another video tutorial online, and I think I'll link to it right about here, uh, to set it up with Bluetooth. So check that out if you, if you want Bluetooth or if you're more interested in Ethernet while well, I've just shown you how to do that. So that's it for this. So this has been Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.